Okay, well, what are we up to today? Well, I've got a project. I uh, got my old man a vintage radio for uh, for Christmas. Hopefully he won't see this video. It's probably going to come out before Christmas Day. Um, in any case, uh, one of the requirements for that is I need to uh, supply a 65, no, 67.5 volts uh, for the filaments and about 3 volts or so or 1.5 for the heater elements in the valves. It's a portable valve radio um, as opposed to some of the transistor ones. So I've got to figure out how to do that. Now I've read um, in a lot of the vintage radio forums and stuff like that, you can push this as far as 72 volts and the current drain is not very high, something in the area of about 30 or 40 milliamps, quite, quite low. So I think I've got a solution for that. Jump to the thing I prepared earlier. In here I have some batteries. I found for about six bucks a pair I can buy these MN21s. They are very similar to the A23 batteries and in fact they're a compatible replacement the same length. So I managed to find myself six of these. And uh, if we can actually see them, yes, I've got six of them. Um, that should add up to 72 volts. They're 12 volts each. They're a stack of little tiny cells in a tube. So I'm going to try and make some sort of battery pack that will hold these. Now I have seen the actual batteries that are available for these. They're still available. Um, however, uh, they're about 150 bucks Australian to get here. So uh, not real cheap, and none of them are going to get here by Christmas. I've seen other guys have put together a string of 9 volt batteries to come up with the same voltage. Um, the problem with those is they're too big and bulky. This one's designed to take the slim, the slim type. So what I'll have is probably not going to be an exactly similar package um, to the original one, but I'll have something that fits and at least can demonstrate it working. Now, uh, in amongst these batteries, Obviously, if you're watching this channel, you're probably aware already that I ha happen to have a laser cutter. So, my plan is to make the battery case out of MDF timber. And I have a collection of springs that I can never get into. Now, this was a nice, nicely organized collection of springs that I dropped one day and forever don't care. So, uh, I have a number of these little springs that have meshed together. Uh, but when I unmesh them, they should form little battery contact springs. Um, as well as... I have some other things. I have a 3mm screw kit um, that I should be able to use for the opposing terminals. And uh, I also have a pile of assorted nuts and bolts as well that should do the job. And I've got some very hefty springs here from uh, 3D printer um, extruder assemblies such as these. So we should be able to come up with, in amongst all these bits, a holster that should hold six of these batteries. So the only problem I've got now is uh, working out A, how to link each terminal together, whether I do it with strips or aluminium tape or wire, um, and also uh, exactly what form factor I'm going to choose with it. Um, now, I'm pretty sure they use a 9-volt clip, uh, like a 9-volt battery clip. I've got a whole box full of them around here somewhere. Um, they're too organized, so naturally I can't find them. But anyway... Let's, uh, let's get cracking in AutoCAD. I'm going to open these up and I'm going to do some measurements with my calipers, um, of which I have here. Got some digital vernier calipers. In fact, I've got about six pairs of these. People keep giving them to me as gifts, which I certainly appreciate. Um, if only they could give me batteries now. Um, anyway, what we'll do, we'll measure these up, we'll figure out the form factor, we'll decide that in, uh, in AutoCAD, and then we might go to the laser cutter. And I've got a few things to cut while I'm out there, so we might get two projects for the one bird, I guess, or two two birds with one stone, I think is the phrase. I'm losing my mind a little bit, but I think I got that right. So, let's get on with the design.
Okay, well we're out in the workshop now after all that design. Good old apprentice here is uh, going to help out. We're going to load up AutoCAD and then uh, we're going to load up a design. AutoCAD down here. So yeah, we're going to load that up and uh, once our designs are done, we're going to swing our camera around all the way around here and we're going to cut some stuff on our laser cutter. And hopefully we'll have a finished battery box by the time we've done that. But I think we're going to cut a mould at the same time. Let's go back and see how our apprentice is progressing. She's struggling with Team Viewer, but that's alright. Give us a couple of moments. Okay, from here, it's time to get everything lined up. I'm going to leave the sheet in from the previous job. I've measured in where it needs to be. Normally I would use a drill and I'd screw all of this down, but um, today I'm going to be a little lazy. It's only a quick job. And this sheet's pretty flat. Normally it gets pretty warped. So we're going to bring the head over here and we're going to auto focus everything. And we're going to try a different angle on the camera today. Normally I'd sit the camera in here and film everything, but today I've got a different bipod, so we're going to try that out and see how this works. So let's shut the lid, get the air lined up, we'll change our settings, and then we'll cut.
All right, here's a bit of a close-up look of where we're at at the moment. So I have my wire link in here, probably not the best soldering job, but it works. In the front here, we can see I've taken the end of the battery clip, and I have swapped the polarity on this 9 volt battery clip to reflect what a battery should be. Um, I haven't been able to find the exact specs on the battery, but I know 9 volt batteries have the same polarity. I will mark them clearly anyway, um, and I'll double check before it ever connects to the radio. Um, now I've wired my wire through the back here into the positive terminal there, and the black one is soldered onto the spring just in the very back there. So, we should be right. Um, the next step, I've got to take a little bit of duct tape and make up a 1mm buffer pad on here just to hold everything in on the lid. And uh, we'll assemble and we'll test, and I'll put some glue on this. We should be pretty right to go after that. Alright, moment of truth time. It's time to put the batteries in. So, uh, see how we go. And I've ground off all the screws nice and short. So this should hopefully work relatively well. Make sure I get everything in the right way round. Yes, I appear to have them in the right way. Ah, oh, that's right, that's the springy one. I have to position that a little differently. That side's alright. This one I need to push the spring down as I push them in. There we go. Let's get everything back on the top. Right, and we'll start putting the screws in. Now, these screws go in individual places now, they're a bit unique because they've all been ground down. But we'll get these all in and we'll be right back with some testing. All right, so we have the end product. I've put a safety cap on here. The cells are, in, are all in. I've ground the screws flat. Um, it's got a little bit battered up in working in the shed in the vise. There was some graphite powder on there and the graphite has uh, made this thing look a little dirty, although it'll be in keeping with everything else. So let's um, select our 200 volt range because this is way above 20 volts and I'm going to use these little probes. I'll take my safety cap off. I actually chopped the wires off inside. I removed the cap on the back so that there's not a couple of little ends poking out the side um, to catch somebody. I've marked positive and negative. I'm going to clip onto the positive here and we're going to clip on to negative. I should see a good 75 volts. Let's bring this up to the camera. See? 75.8. It should be about 72. I reckon it'll come down usually, hopefully, to about 67 under load. But uh, I'm pretty happy with that at the moment. So we're doing pretty well. And let's put this back on so I don't accidentally electrify myself. Right. That's better. That shall a little bit of tape around there, and that should uh, transport nicely. So that's pretty well that. I can't show you the actual radio. I've got to keep that wrapped up until Christmas. But uh, certainly, when uh, when my senior engineer or senior technician, or he's got so many titles, when my father um, gets this radio working, I'll be sure to give you a look. And we'll uh, add that on. Um, in fact, this video is coming out before Christmas. So we'll, uh, that's why I'm keeping that video hidden, or that radio hidden. Uh, anyway, I should stop talking. My brain's starting to fall over, and uh, my script's going with it. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Um, if you are a vintage radio uh, enthusiast and you want a copy of my design files, I'm more than happy to send them to you. I've used standard 3 mil nuts and bolts for everything, and uh, a standard size of spring that you can buy very readily. So yeah, I'm happy to make a few of these and send them out if anybody really wants them. But yeah, leave me a comment or send me a message. Or in fact, I think YouTube's abolished that now. So just leave me a comment. We'll try and uh, get some sort of contact one way or another. But anyway, I'm happy to, uh, to share. I'll catch you all later.